Welcome back to beautiful Shelton, Washington for the final round of Discraft's Cascade Challenge presented by Grip EQ. Stand still to perfection. Jumping ahead to little two, La Castro putting for birdie. One for two start for La Castro. from Rickney. And I think it went inside that tree, if I'm not mistaken. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Just outside the Mando tree, inside the last one. Jumping ahead to four for Babcock. Yeah, he's been pretty on the money with those Heiser to stand up forehands this weekend. Throwing two. From 50? That was a big one. Oh, yeah. Wow. This third kind of tester for par of the round and makes good on them. Andrew Presnell on hole seven. He goes to the flex play. Seemed a little overturned, but Really relying on that stability, and that is money. Throwing putter. And this is where the fun begins. Look at him coach that thing over. It's so good at listening. This is why I took the job. He is now just one off the lead as Oakley throws on four. Bell's just one off the lead now? Bell is one off the lead thanks to the eagle on hole eight. Oh, and... Oakley just dialing in the spice. He's right. been money with that disc. He threw it in yesterday on hole That's 10. Right. He threw it in last week in Sweden. Barella on the tee of eight. Going roller here. The wind is down. This is a great angle. He has made the Mando up there. Just smokes it through the early gap. Eric playing with so much confidence right now. That's part That was incredible, man. Yeah, that tree right in front of him, like it three was foot big. gap. Yeah, yeah big. He's a gamer, man. This is a spicy upshot, absolutely. Look at that gap. Look at all the rest of these gaps. And hits the fern, stops it right there. Don't hit that. Oh, off the band and still finds its way home. Conrad, this is an eagle putt for AB in circle one. He's in the circle, Ian. No Come on. Way. 530 foot roller in the woods. Holy 11, McMahon. Little touch shot for Eagle, going beaded putter. It's amazing how easy you guys make this look, Nate. Yeah, it's really not that easy, huh? No. Yeah, that's just a nine speed right there. Evan Scott, ladies and gentlemen. Another one from out of 50 feet. McMahon throwing two on 12. He saw the roller drive. There's a birdie. You know, Good leave hit. early. He kind of stayed oh, in position it. for that and then just barely avoided it. Waisaki. Rick is going with that forehand, and that pays off for him. Birdie putt for McMahon on 12. 
So he was actually just outside the circle and he was. Eagle. Matt Bell for par. Come on. What a save. That drive was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> Pitches back out, gets a late tree, stays calm. Babcock snuck that one over. On 13, McMahon from circle two for birdie. Oh, wait, this is actually from the fairway, excuse me. No, it's not, Ian. From 90 feet. Let's check out some scores. McMahon and Bell from the fourth card, leading the event by a stroke. to get down, I think. Oh. <laughs> Putting for birdie, circle two. Yeah. <laughs> Evan Scott. Evan Scott's tee shot on 13. Ooh, that is perfect. We actually haven't seen too many people finish right of this pin. Yeah! That felt a little different, what? Nate. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone more intentional from 60 feet, Ian? That we've seen, and it's with a putter. Scott. What was the other hole? Nine. He peered nine every round with that putter. Oh, this is big time from Scott to drop in birdie. What? Ricky needs to execute. He's got nine speed. Flips it up nicely. Looks a little wide, but swinging in. Oh, great ground play. He's going to match Evan's shot. He will need this to stay two behind Rick. James Conrad with the ham bone. Get just inside the cluster of trees that we can see on our right. One off the lead, two to go. It's wide. It is wide, it needs help like it got yesterday. It got oh, it. It did. It climbed just over those bushes. Whoa, that's like 22 feet. I really like his birdie chances, yeah. Up one, two to go. Gets that the got kiss. so much help, Ian. That's even closer. It is. <laughs> no, sent Big time. Where are the rafter legs at? <laughs> That's as pure as it gets, Ian. That goes a long way to icing this thing down. I heard a tree, Nate. Yeah, that was early tree, Ian, and I believe that's going to close his run at the Cascade title. Kind of looks like it. And puts it on the base of the pyramid for a drop in very finish. What? 
That was unbelievable. <laughs> Considering the stakes, that's one of the better putts he's ever made. That was a putt for a maybe G's, you know? And your Cascade Challenge champion, Ricky Wysocki. I just want to know, you know, we know what it's been like physically for you. Uh, we know it has to be really bad for you to pull out of a tournament, but what has it been like mentally for you to sit out so many tournaments? Like, do you keep up with the pro tour scene? Are you still watching these events or, or what do you do to kind of take care of the mind during this time off? Yeah. I mean, it's a deep, dark place when you go from being best player in the world to not even being able to compete at all. That's a, that's a tough spot to be in for sure. Um, one extreme to the other, but I kind of feel like I felt like a caged animal, just waiting to get out there for competition. And this week was the first week I really felt 100% even all year. Last week I was getting there, but I still wasn't there. And this week I just, I, you know, I felt everything was clicking. My game's feeling good. My mental side's good. And uh, there's just no ailments. And so I think when, obviously when that's the case, I can, I can win at any tournament. And I think that's, you know, reassuring to, to come out here and just, just, uh, just win. And that's, you know, I know I missed a lot of events, so... If I get in position this year, I want to take the strike and win. So you definitely had some moments of brilliance last week at Beaver State. You ended up in 11th place. You come to a course like Shelton, and I want to know, like, what's the difference in the preparation? What was your week like? How many practice rounds did you have, and what shot shapes were you really focused on? Yeah, I mean, out here, it's, it's basically all wooded. There's not a single shot you can relax on and be like, oh, okay, I don't have to hit a gap. It's... You're hitting gaps on every shot. There's OB, and uh, if you miss shots, you're bouncing into tough spots where it's hard to save par. So it's it's all about hitting lines and scrambling. I mean, there's, some of the fairways are so tight that you're scrambling from 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 the fairway, just with weird angles, weird sidearms, weird backhands. So a lot of shot shaping, and I think that was the name of the game out here is just throw it down there as far as you can without hitting a tree and then scramble and, and try to give yourself a lot of opportunities from circle one, and I, I, I did that this week. Evan played great. He's a, he's a great player. This course fits his game really well. He's good at shot shaping. He can throw sidearm backhand, and he hits putts. I mean, you saw that putt on 18. That was that was sick just to keep solo second. Nasty. So he's a force to be reckoned with, and it's, uh, it's going to be great competing with him.